All right, today we have something totally different, and I figured I'd share with you guys. I do this. What it is is, is uh, going to be me going over wiring diagrams from top to bottom and explaining what all the inputs and outputs are be uh, should be so that we can diagnose them properly. I do a lot of this behind the scenes for people to help them out, like little custom videos, and I figured I would let you guys have access to them also because it can help other people. Uh, you know, in the future or currently, if they're putting off this this problem on their vehicle, and uh, that that's what this channel is all about. So, let me know down below what you guys think of these videos, and if they're good, bad, whatever. One note is that you're gonna probably have to watch this in HD so you can see all the little lettering and color codes and all that stuff. So that's just a note, a little bit bigger screen, and watch it in HD. Now this one is. Uh, uh, let me just start by saying that I generally do not use pinpoint tests. I go right for the wiring diagram, and I can see everything all laid out, and I can diagnose stuff 10 times faster and more accurately this way. And this is the way I recommend you guys to diagnose stuff also. So, uh, without further ado, this one's a 2007 Ford Focus that has heated seats and both sides are not working now in general and both sides of the vehicle are not working what you want to look at is something that's in common and this one get, we can see the power is in common okay it just branches off of both sides and also the ground down here for the switch to work and everything is common also so the way you should really diagnose these things is go from the top down and that's the way I'm gonna go walk you guys through them so in an interior fuse panel, there's a fuse 52, 15 amp, okay? And you want to make sure that's not blown and test both sides of it with your little voltmeter. There's little metal tabs on these things and of course check it out and visually inspect it. Great. Uh, once that's verified to be okay and there's power coming in and out of it, then we're going to go over to the heated seat switch itself. Now I'm not sure where it's at in the focus. I'm sure if you have a focus, you know where it's at. It's either in the center console or on the valence of the uh, uh, seat itself. Uh, I don't see too many focuses with heated seats. Um, so we're going to go down to the heated switch, and, uh, heated switch, and we're going to concentrate just on one side. You don't want to get confused going back and forth and side to side. If we find a problem on this side, it's probably going to fix the problem on the other side in the case where both sides are not working. So pull the switch out for the driver's side, disconnect the connector, okay, and on pin 2, which is a green and yellow wire, there should be 12 volts at all times coming into here as long as the key is in the start position or in the run position. Now, obviously, we're not going to hold it in the start position, so we're going to have it in the run position. And we're going to check for 12 volts coming into it. Now, a quick, easy test for this is without even pulling that off. Okay, we're going to have to pull it off eventually anyways, but just a visual. You're sitting in your seat, keys on and you should be able to look over and there should be illumination coming from this LED which means we're getting power in and this ground is fine I mean it tells you everything right there so the switch is illuminated and then the switch lights up once you actually turn it on this is another light emitting diode over here and these are usually pretty you know reliable it's a light emitting diode there's no filament inside of them to burn out so they kind of last the life of the vehicle so that's a good indication if this thing's lighting up then the regular illumination one, then you know you're getting power and ground into here in general. So while the switch is out, we're going to test the ground right here. Pin 4, which is black. Make sure you got a good ground. You can even jump from this to pin 4 with your test light. Or what I prefer is a something like a, a large light bulb or a, a window motor, something like that that's going to pull some amperage. Because uh, those heated seat elements are going to pull some amperage and they need to work. Whereas these LEDs, they pull probably barely any amperage at all, a, a milliamp probably, uh, to work. So that's not a definite indication on there. Now, when you hit that switch, reconnect that switch back to the connector, okay? Hit the switch like you're turning it on. This internal latching right here should latch and send the 12 volts that's coming in. We already verified, right? It should send it out to the heated seat element. Okay? And that's all this switch really is doing. Forget all these lights and everything else. It needs to pass the current on out to 
the 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 heated seat element itself. So we're gonna go on to that. If I can get to it here. And this is what the other half of the the circuit looks like. So this is the driver's side. Okay, so that power is gonna come down to the driver's side, to the connector down there. There'll be two pins on it only. It'll be a two-pin connector, and one side be green yellow, and the other side be black. So you can easily find that under a focus seat. Um, so find that connector and make sure you're getting this ground and the 12 volts coming in. Okay, it's that simple. It's literally going to pass it through the heated seat element right here. Now, if you're getting power in and you're getting a good ground, even load test with a lighter uh, window motor or something like that, right? So you pull some amperage, everything's okay. Thing still isn't working. What the heck is going on here? Well, this right here is the element itself. It's kind of a zigzag of wire that goes through the and inside of a pad that goes under your seat there between the seat cushion and the seat cover, and it just heats up. That's all it is, like a resistive uh, pellet almost, but it's wire instead. These break all the time from sitting in that seat, getting in, plopping in the seat, whatever, and they break all the time. So the next thing you want to do after you verify power and ground is coming into it is to check the resistance of this, and it should be... Um, it's, it's usually a couple ohms only. The last thing you want to check is that element uh, connector itself that connects to the harness under the seat. It looks something like this. We're going to go between the two of them, and it should be just a little over one ohm, uh, and that'll show good resistance. Now, if like I said, this can be intermittent because the, the element gets broken in the seat, so while you're testing this with your multimeter, right, and you're like, well, I have voltage coming in, I have ground coming in, and then I go to test the element, and it has 1 to 2 ohms. What is the problem? Well, guess what? Keep it on here, okay? And then go over your seat and punch down on it, kind of lean into it one hand, uh, lean your body weight into it one hand, these, these isolated areas all over the seat to kind of uh, try to get it to break apart in there. If you have an intermittent issue where it's just slightly broken, and you go to sit in the, ve in the seat, it'll open it up the circuit, and that's not going to work. You get out of the seat, and you're testing it, and it works. So that's how you test the seat element itself without pulling the cover off also. And that's how simple the heated seats are on 07 Focus. There's no module to deal with, any kind of weird uh, interaction with the climate control module, nothing like that. It's very, very simple. Um, so basically it's power in, power out, and then you're at the, the heated seat element by, at that point. And everything else is internal to the heated seat element. So it's a very simple, simple setup on here. Um, and if you follow my instructions, I'm sure you'd be able to diagnose it. And like I said, if both sides are not working and you fix this side, hey, this side's working, well, I'm pretty sure the other side's going to work. So it's going to be something common, especially on a system like this where uh, they don't have modules. It's very, very simple. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you guys want to see more stuff like this in the future, just let me know. Um, I do come across, I do do custom um, videos like this for people, and I think other people can also benefit from it. Uh, so just let me know.